<laughs> so there's the concept put the uh, Dremel extension on the trunks the extruder head and you've got yourself a CNC router perhaps uh, the belts might be too weak, the x-axis certainly can't resist rock very well the entire thing might be underpowered even cutting plastic and it might be a great way to ruin what's otherwise a great printer but then again it might work perhaps it could cut precision holes in project boxes for me could it engrave? could I maybe make copper circuit boards? sounds like a fun project this is the collar I designed it's fairly straightforward these two holes on the back allow me to get some bolts into the existing holes on the left hand side of the trunks extruder head these two holes at the front allow me to get a screwdriver in to tighten those bolts and these two holes allow me to get a nut and bolt through each of them to tighten the clamp on the Dremel attachment here's the actual part being attached to the extruder head no problems Now this shot shows you how the bolt holes are recessed so that the heads sink below the surface so there's a nice snug fit on the Dremel attachment. The Dremel's a nice snug fit into the collar. Um, it's easily pushed into the required depths and then uh, tightened in place with those two bolts. So far so good, and I suppose it's no surprise that the machine is able to move the whole contraption around under its own power with no apparent problems at all. Well the ugly moment of truth creeps ever closer. Um, I manually set the head height to be uh, so the cutter was um, safely above the surface of the bed. Um, this is some polycarbonate sheeting used in um, for insulation uh, to, let, to let the sun in it's um, a laminated structure it's got cells in and the individual membrane thickness is oh, I don't know probably 0.3 of a millimeter thick um, so I start the cutter turning and then I'm using the manual jog controls on the uh, repetier interface to move the head slowly across the work As you can hear the note on the Dremel changes as the cutter does more or less work and I'm changing the dial on the, the main unit of the Dremel to compensate to try and keep it spinning fast enough to stop it stalling. I'll speed this up to take us to the end. It's perhaps a bit difficult to see, but the outside of the cut is very, very good, smooth and straight. Um, the inside less so, and of course the piece is not coming out because the bottom lamination is still intact. I didn't want to go that close to the bed. But this is proof that um, the concept is not, um, is not doomed, that I think this could work. So the printer transport itself can move the cutter to cut material. Um, that's been proven to work. The next step is to automate it so that the, um, the printer or router, whatever we call it now, um, can cut under its own control. There are several problems. The, um, the cutter bit is lower than the extruder head. The, um, it's in a different position as well and the cutting feed rates are much much slower than the um, travel rates when the thing is working as a 3D printer. So I did a quick crash course in G-code um, and had a few sparring matches with Slicer which insists on doing things I tell it not to do. Edited the G-code and finally had a file I was willing to try on the printer.
The cutter is dropping very slowly into the work. I'm being very conservative. Don't want to snap anything. But it is doing it all itself. I'm not involved. That is the sound of first blood. So now it starts the uh, the feed, the power cut. <laughs> you can see my hand hovering over the power socket ready to kill it quickly. <laughs> At this point it made a bid for freedom and I had to kill it. You don't want to see that old black cat. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, not too bad. Just a little gougy wougy. Hmm. And on that noty woty, I think we'll leave it there for today. In part two, I will have learned um, G code a bit better. I'll have set up and be using a CNC router software instead of trying to fight with a 3D printing software. And hopefully, I'll have some exciting results for you, or at least something fun to show. Alright, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.